Welcome back to the channel. Today, Monica and I are going to head off for a barbecue because in Tenerife they've got loads of these kind of barbecue areas where you can just set up your own little place in the middle of the countryside or up Tady, up the volcano and just enjoy the scenery. There's a brilliant one that I think we saw a few years ago and we had a barbecue there and we're going to go there this time. So we're going to go to Little, stop off for a coffee and we'll take you with us on a kind of day in the life Tenerife video. But I want to show you something. This will be of zero interest if you're not a car fan. Monica, pan over to that. Little Fiat 500, 180,000 miles on the clock. I feel like we need to get it a cake or something and celebrate. 180,000 miles on the clock. I'd love to hear. Okay, if anyone's got a small car, let's say 1.4 litre or below with higher mileage than 180,000 miles, I would love to hear it. Please, please let me know in the description. I'm, I'll be so curious. I want to know how far. Hola. Hola. I'd love to know how far this can go. I feel I must get it to 200,000 miles on the clock. That's a must now. I now love this car too much. This will horrify Monica. I feel like I have to keep it for life. <laughs> so we're about to go to one of our favorite coffee spots in El Medano. And I was saying this to Monica actually, since everything's kind of been locked down and maybe it's harder to get into places like Bali and Thailand at the moment and maybe people are a bit more nervous, I actually think El Medano here almost has a little bit of that vibe. It's almost a bit like Europe's kind of, I don't know, Bali or Thailand. You get a huge amount of surfers coming here and just to enjoy the simple laid back lifestyle, go out surfing every day, go to any number of the nice coffee shops and stuff. It's got a really unique vibe here, completely different to Adeja, which is more popular. But this place actually here, El Medano, this is a really nice place to stay and you get the good weather, but it's windy almost every day. That's why it's like a, a kite surfing mecca. Monica's just waiting for our food and coffee. And I thought I'd show you down here because it's such a nice spot. We've got all of the kite surfers there. All of the kite surfers just behind me. And then this is an old dormant volcano actually, right over here. And then you've got these brilliant little fish restaurants that are meant to be very, very good right on the waterfront with tables and chairs literally overlooking the sea there. I'll take you through this way though, because this is one of, I think for coffee, it's one of the best spots in El Medina. And just the other side from the water, across the road, and you get to the coffee shop. me when we first got to Tenerife is the supermarkets they are always busy it doesn't matter if you come at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. or lunchtime or Sunday or Tuesday they're always always packed I've never seen anything like it at all it doesn't exist at quiet time the supermarkets here well here we are little is one of the most popular supermarkets in Tenerife and as you can see it's about it's about 11:30 on a Thursday absolutely packed. Thought I'd give you an idea of the incredible prices of wine in Tenerife. Huge amount of wines around about the 150, 180 mark. Really, I've never seen anywhere else in the world prices like it. 
Prices of alcohol are incredibly good value here. But if you look at normal stuff, food, things like that, whether it's milk or vegetables, it's pretty much exactly the same as the UK in reality. Interestingly, getting green veg, broccoli, spinach and stuff, much more expensive than the UK and also a lot harder to come by. Sometimes you've actually got to go to special fruiterias to actually get broccoli, for example. You know, it's funny how the world works because I can buy Scotch whiskey in Tenerife cheaper here than in Scotland or in the UK, but bananas in London are cheaper than in Tenerife where bananas grow like weeds in Tenerife. It's funny how world economies work. These are still so common as everyday cars. Probably see about two a day of these. The old three series from the late 80s, convertible. I just love seeing them used still as normal everyday cars, beautiful. I remember when these were about 500 quid, probably looking at two and a half K at least now in the UK for one of these, if not, if not a lot more. We are a kilometer up now and after 20 minutes riding you're so happy you wore thermals or some warm gear because the temperature goes from 23 down there you look ridiculous with this and then very quickly you think yep this is the perfect gear we've just ridden past yeah monica if you give an idea on setting a weird cave here sea all the way down there kilometer up now beautiful winding roads and there are two caves here one there and one here. Monica, do you want to come in? No, thank you. <laughs> Let me take it. Okay, right. Have a look at this. Please, someone, let us know what these caves are. We have no idea how old they are. No idea who used to live in them. There's an extra room there. An extra little room here. Lots of rubbish. So maybe someone's been in here. I don't know, semi-living or something. And then that's so dark, I can't even see to the end of that. And then I don't know what this is, but a strange white thing leading all the way up there. I'd love to know, I'd love to know what it is. And then that's it to the exit. I'd be fascinated, genuinely, please someone do. Let me know in the comments, what were these caves for? Was it, I don't know, is it stupid to say, probably the Guanches, that's impossible because they wouldn't have been able to carve this out, but someone's carved this out. I'm sure of it. So please do let me know, I'd really appreciate it.
Well, this is magical. We're, we've been going through the cloud line for what feels like about 300 meters in altitude. We're now one and a half kilometers above sea level. It's, it's magical with all of the clouds there just sitting around this pine forest. And I actually think, look down there, Monica, at how thick the clouds are, and look up there, how thin the clouds are. I think, I think we're within 200 meters of breaking above the cloud line. So in theory, I don't know if we'll get that high today, but we would see Mount Tede, the top of the volcano, looking up, blue sky everywhere, and looking down would just be a blanket of white. I don't know if we'll do it this time, you just never know how high the clouds sit, but it's magical. Well, we've arrived. I'll put the exact name of this place in the written description of the video. But you get a few of these around Tenerife and so far from what we've found, this is the most impressive. It's huge. Let's do a little tour. So, toilet facilities here, parking here. It's all free, so you don't have to worry about a thing. And then, we're actually, I don't know if you can see it here, we're pretty much completely above the cloud line. You've got a few thin clouds above us, but we're above all of the thick cloud here. It's about 13 degrees. Wrap up warm, especially if you're on a bike, you need winter gear, but otherwise, do you know what? You probably still need borderline winter gear, actually. But it's such a nice spot, pine forest. And I'll just run ahead of Monica so we can see this bit. And dotted along, you get a huge amount of tables and individual barbecues around so you get complete privacy and you get to pick where in the hills we, we can see as far as we can see different barbecues all over the place you can pick anywhere you want and it is it's an incredible way to spend a day and of course completely free just buy some food a few bits of coal that you can get from any supermarket i think one euro 80 and they've got an amazing day out i think that's new in the past probably six years since we've been here this little play area here you know what it is about spain it's the outdoor lifestyle isn't it yeah. it's just so nice to come here it doesn't cost a thing and what's in that little house oh i think actually i think they're the loos down there i'm sure oh. they're the loos yeah it says they're actually wc so they're the loos down there okay I'm okay let's go and find our spot perfect i'm starving <sighs> Right, all the food here, pots, pans, coal, fire lighters. Let's get this fire going. I am borderline in a bad temper now, I'm so hungry. Hard to win, hard to This is not going well. The people who got here five minutes after us now have a beautiful barbecue going. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a barbecuer. 
it's actually now at the point where it's embarrassing because everyone else is starting to cook their food <laughs> and all I've done is put a whole load of fire lighters on top of some coal <laughs> and now they're burning but every time I put coal on the fire lighters it just starts going out and I'm sure I've used enough ha! <laughs> Okay. Okay. That's not actually a barbecue, that's just firelighters sitting on coal burning. <laughs> Take a stand, move your hand someday. In your eyes, no disguise, one day. I look out for you to soothe away the blues in your Well, lunch done, that was delicious, and my dreadful attempt at a barbecue was just good enough to cook everything. But we were just, wait, I'll flip this, flip this, Monica. There, we were just using this water thing to clean the pots. And then three woodpeckers came over, one big bird. You can see the second you put it on, they're all desperate for water. I'm gonna do a David Attenborough, set up my phone, recording, pour some water out, and capture these birds. That's an incredible blue bird, just here. Whoa! Okay, get ready for some really interesting bird watching. Okay. My heart is broken. 10 minutes later and not one bird has come. The second we start filming, not one bird. <laughs> I'll leave it until the battery dies. And then I'll find out I forgot to press record or something when all the birds fly back. But this place, <laughs> this place is full, full of woodpeckers. I've never seen anything like it. Two woodpeckers and a weird blue bird. It could be a woodpecker as well. Is the woodpecker your favorite bird? Do you know, I've never seen woodpecker in my life. And I know you're trying to bully me saying, is it my favorite bird? No, it's not, but it would be amazing. It would be amazing to capture one so close. It's about a meter away or two meters away. Monica is making the coffees. My secret bird camera is still running. So I'll take you on just a little tour of where the area is because this is a brilliant and not so obvious way to spend a day in Tenerife, you know, away from the touristy areas. And yeah, it may not be as warm. It's about 13 degrees compared to 23 or something in a dare hair, but Wear a sweatshirt and it's completely fine. It's pretty much never going to rain up here so you don't have to worry about a thing. And it really is a great, not so obvious way just, yeah, to spend one day of your holiday in Tenerife. I highly recommend it. They've even got a football pitch made out of logs. So goalposts made out of logs. Look at the color of the soil. It's literally red, the soil color. There you go, even a football pitch, although football pitch, I wouldn't want to shoot that way because it's not going to be easy getting the ball back. And we're very close here to the top. I think this must be very close to the top of the tree line. You can just see where the trees start to thin out just below the top of these mountains. Oh, this is a good view to, to kind of demonstrate how high we are. If I zoom in here through the trees, that is the cloud line right ahead of us. You can see how much higher we are than the clouds. Just in the distance, blanket of clouds there, and then the clouds start thinning out here. It's still cloudy above, but we are 
well above at least the first cloud line there. So if any birds decide to drink from, from the bird tray, Monica will include it before this ending, but we'll finish it here because the sun actually goes down in about an hour and a half and the temperature will drop even more. But I've said before, we'll include the link here. This is such a brilliant, brilliant place to spend the day. And funnily enough, it's actually better coming here when it's cloudy because when it's cloudy, it's really mysterious and it's just, it's got a really, really good vibe, even better than when it's crystal clear. So if you come here when the weather's a bit worse, not only do you get to ride or drive through the clouds, you actually often will go above the cloud line and sit above a blanket of clouds. It's a just brilliant, brilliant experience. But we'll have our coffees now and do about maybe five more minutes bird watching. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next one.